Inquisitor, the 30 defense, combat only, ultimate Iron Man. With the full Inquisitor's armor set in his possession, a new main goal is at hand. Acquire the Inquisitor's mace and complete various sub-goals along the way. His journey continues today. Last time on Inquisitor, we gained a new Chamber's CM personal best with a fitting combat achievement. I got a speed chaser? <laughs> we arrived at the new area of Varlamore. Here we are, welcome to Fortis. Exciting. Purdue now sells us a magical cape. And last but not least, and there it is, 700 KC has been achieved on the Inquisitor. Welcome to April 16th, and today a very big blog just dropped, and I'm not gonna get into it because I made a specific video for it, which you can check out in the top right corner here before you watch this video. But in short, the most important things for me is the fact that Nightmare is getting a drop buff. According to the blog, it should be around 50% more common, the items, that is. So now we can no longer do Nightmare until these drop rate increases are added to the game. And that leaves three things left for me to do. Chambers of Zarek, Theater of Blood, and Slayer. Oh, hello friend. That's the second pet Kraken I've gotten. Look at that cute little guy. Well, let's take a look at the Kraken log. We're in the 23rd percentile. One thing that I think I should note is that I believe that the Kraken task is the only situation where I will be away from my clue scroll juggle for an extended period of time meaning for over an hour. So yes, this is the one task where I'll have to every hour juggle up a clue scroll with me, or I'll have to leave every hour to ensure the clues don't despawn. Wowie! Money! It's always fun when we can do this. Uncharge it. And elk it. Free 40k, and we have a bunch of runes to sell now. Goodbye, little guy. It's been nice hanging out with you again. Right, so I'm gonna use this door over here to let them ball. Watch me go, bro. I'm watching. Meet Zeropean. A Zaya locked hardcore Iron Man. Zero has over 2,000 Chambers of Zeric kill count, and he's hunting for his final two unique items at the Chambers a twisted bow, an ancestral robe top. And we've made a deal. We're only going to do Chambers of Zeric together until one of us gets an item that we can use. In the past, Zero and I have attempted to duo Chambers, however, it didn't go so well. But thanks to the Perilous Moons, which released with Varlamore, he got a big melee DPS upgrade. And this is the gear that Zero will be rocking in our duos. Doing Chambers of Zeric together, we found that on average we'd get around 50,000 points per raid. Fairly evenly distributed amongst ourselves, we'd generally finish within 5,000 points of each other, and the raids would take around 35 minutes on average. So with all that said, let's see what carnage we got up to. Uh, what pass? I'm just passing, just passing. No, no! <laughs> he's off the I was the still game. walking, bro. <laughs> so I'm just gonna scav and stuff. So it, you know, it's, it's technically a shortcut. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was intentional. That's the first time I've died at cocked in you know, probably about a thousand kz. <laughs> at ice demon, no less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More range hit to mage, maybe. I'm risking it. Oh. <laughs> oh! No! That was wild. Please don't hit me right now. Please don't hit me right now. Please don't hit me right now. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! No! <laughs> He's fine! Oh my god. I'm 5 HP again, bro. Fuck <laughs> with no food. <laughs> that is wild. Alright, right. so we can cheese this. We just gotta tag it, you know, to focus off each other with this. Sure. So this is definitely not the best example of quote-unquote cheesing the rangers. However, this will give you a gist of what we're doing. Later down the line, we got this down to a science and I can get five crossbow hits while Zero can get three crossbow hits on a ranger and we take absolutely zero damage. So the whole method is essentially you're just tagging the ranger off of each other. Now what does that mean? You see, these rangers hold aggro for a certain amount of time before swapping targets. On a tick perfect rotation, I can get in five crossbow hits and that is equivalent to 15 ticks. While Zero, 
with the Dragon Hunter crossbow can get in three hits, which at an attack rate of five ticks, can of course get three hits. The timer for this begins as soon as the hit splat appears on the ranger. So in short, you need to have already clicked on the ranger and be launching your attack as the hit splat lands. You see, the math evens out. Oh yeah, and remember, we can do this without taking damage. Perfect for the duo snowflake chambers of Zarek. We got that shit down to a science, let's go. Yeah, this is in a room that I can uh, lure them at the door. But if they step to the skull and I attack, I can uh, get them safe spotted. Mmm, got his ass. Oh, wait. Oh, we're good? Yeah, we got his ass, bro. Yeah, it's right. perfect. Yeah, easy game. Now I just gotta pray that the other one doesn't stroll over and uh, say hello. Actually, no, now that I got him in place, he's always gonna try to align his southwest tile with me. So if I go east to avoid the other shaman, it's completely fine. Oh, that's... Giga brain. The one tile win. These skulls? Godsend. Oh, an elite clue. Is it completable? It is. Very cool. Send it. Send it. No, I, this is my third one. I'm stacking up seven. Oh, gotcha. Three elites and a hard clue now. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, so I won't lie. Our first day of raids went terribly. But, in a sense, this was just the warm-up we needed. So, four out of five of the raids yesterday with Zero were a little bit of a disaster. We had deaths in pretty much every raid, aside from the one raid that we found that we could both get around 25 to 30,000 points. So, identifying the main issues, Mudadile, it ate up a lot of my food supplies, and essentially just making dumb mistakes. The latter can be fixed by just experiencing and doing the raid a little more, knocking off the rust, and the former will hopefully be solved by me entangling Modadile. The entangle will hold your opponent for 15 seconds, and hopefully this will be enough time for us to kill Mutt before it reaches the tree, or at the very least, prevent it from reaching the tree altogether. And with the Modadiles not eating the tree, that is less time spent in Modadile room, taking damage, and eating up all of my supplies. Today's raids will be better. So here we are, our new setup for normal chambers of Zarek, I will note. For CMs, we essentially drop the Berserker ring imbued and just camp the Brimstone ring. And also, I won't be entangling in CMs. But for normal raids, this is our new setup. We have Entangle, our teleports, because we used to bring Law Runes, Earth Runes, and Soul Runes in the Rune Pouch. We no longer actually need Soul Runes at all because we have this Xerix Talisman, Xerix Heart Teleport, which puts us right at the center of Karend. Soul Runes used to be required for the Karend Castle Teleport, and they are no longer. Now, dropping the Law Runes out of the Rune Pouch for the Nature Runes instead is sort of a pain, but at the end of the day isn't that big of a deal, because I can very simply teleport to Xerix Heart, then go east and take the Charter Ship right here, all the way over to Port Phasmatis, which puts us very close to our death coffer over here at the Theater of Blood. So I do believe that everything is covered on the teleport front, even without our law runes in our inventory. Oh, and you would have seen in previous clips, but I moved my clue scrolls to the Chambers of Zarek rather than the respawn teleport at the Ferox Enclave. I think the reason for this is fairly obvious, seeing that I am on the normal spellbook. Yeah. 42. Man, look at us in sync. Oh, yeah. It's just too easy. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's saving it. He's saving it. Yeah. I just wanted to tank one, that's all. But you tanked two. I know. That was a general mistake the second time. Ah. Uh, <laughs> that's nice. This is pushing me. Yeah, we like these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Yeah, oh, let's yeah. go First blast him, bro. <laughs> Can we kill him? Can we kill him? Come on, game. Please. No. No. Oh, we got it. We got it. I, get oh. I splashed. Okay, he, did, he doesn't yeah, want to eat anymore. He, he, yeah. Oh, shit, I'm not even overloaded. You got the freeze without the overload? Oh, my God. Yeah, I just realized that. All right. <laughs> I got a chug. I got a chug. I got a chug. Look on freeze. Oh. I'm dead. Oh. I was even watching my HP. I was focused on swapping <laughs> gear. 
<laughs> that doesn't even make me angry, to be honest. Well, at least we have a, a good example of what it looks like uh, for the little mutt. Oh, I switched. Oh, yeah, we got the strat down. It's so good, dude. That's on me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Just as I say, we got the strat down. <laughs> oh. oh, I caught. Let's go. Nice. Wreck him. Wreck him. Get his ass. Wreck him. Surely he'll forget about it, right? Yeah, I think he's going to die before he even gets to that. Yeah, this is the ticket. Nice. Very uh, nice. This is not a safe spot. That's not a safe spot. Ah, it's okay. If that That is not a... I'm not worried, bro. Don't worry. Be worried. Be very worried. One chop. You're so lucky, bro. <laughs> I got 10 brews on me, bro. <laughs> God. I'm just trying to keep him this way so you got time for a tangle. I got it ready. Go, 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 go. I splashed. No. Go. <laughs> I caught. Oh, he bugged. He bugged. Oh, you got it. What's Get his go? ass. Get his ass. <laughs> surely it won't. Work. Yeah, surely it won't eat now. Surely. Sh surely. surely. Yeah. Let's go. Too easy. Yeah, the tech. We figured Let's it out. Go. Meta strats for us. <laughs> New meta, bro. Just ah! the freeze, you know. Yeah, ain't nobody got, ain't nobody got time for those ancient freezing thingamajigs. <laughs> All right, good luck. Yo, smite that. KT ball. Oh, purple. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I, I, I have my chat closed. So I don't even know what it is. Oh, okay. Your reaction is telling me it's dog. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Sorry, I sort of expected <laughs> as much. That's so sad, man. Well, let's read it. Guys, be broken. Yep, and there is Augur. Oh, is it new unlock for you? Fog. Yep. That is let's the go. first arcane scroll I've oh, I had. Oh, I guess grass. Yeah, it's uh, I guess it's a collection log. It's a unique. It's uh, <laughs> it's pain. I've now had five scrolls and one ancestral robe top. Wonderful. That helps me so much. I'll trade you. <laughs> Like two claws <laughs> for your ancestral road top. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll give you two first for the price of one. Oh, well, you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> well, at least it's the dry streak broken again. Kind of glad I died. Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Pawn it off on me, huh? Right. Hey, that's a free eight mil right there, bro. Can't complain, right? <laughs> no, it's a unlock that I'm never gonna use because I read it. Yeah, true. <laughs> As a reminder, and to those of you who do not know, Augury and Rigor both require 70 defense to use. We are, of course, at 30. But, should anything change in the future, I have both of them unlocked now. So I guess that is something. No, 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 where, where are you? Where? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Homie's trolling! <laughs> what the? <laughs> Trying to give you a chance to save some health, and you're like, oh, what the? Oh, run around like a chick with my head cut off. I had to, bro. Sorry. Okay, okay. Oh, an elite clue. Is it completable? Pirate's Cove. I believe that is incompletable. Okay, I can't get to Pirate's Cove. That is a drop. So. Oh, what do you call that? Oh, oh. oh let's go! <laughs> He's gaming. That was crazy. Let's go. Hell yeah. Another elite clue, and it's probably incompletable. It's a Sherlock, so. So I am told by my fellow 807 brethren that if we happen to get a completable Sherlock step, the 2 of 24 chance, that we will be able to complete every single other incompletable step should we roll another Sherlock step. So let's go and see what this Sherlock step in particular is. All right, Sherlock, is today the day we read it? Catch a black warlock. It is not. However, this is a step that we can keep, and should we get another Sherlock step that is completable, we can complete this step by completing that completable step and then picking this one up and handing it in instead. Okay, that's enough. Yum, bananas. Yum, bananas. Yum, bananas. <laughs> Yum, bananas. 
Right, so I'm gonna use this door over here to let them fall. Watch me go, bro. I'm watching. Oh no, I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> I watch you go. Why didn't I f eat, bro? Holy sh <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Yeah, I watched you go straight to your grave. <laughs> Gaming? Holy. So at this point, it had been just under a week since we started Duo Chambers, and we were very satisfied with the results of me bringing Entangle to the raid. We found that a majority of the time, as long as I had my mage gear on, I would instantly catch the Entangle on the Little Mudda dial. And just throwing out a random number, we found that I landed about 70% of the freezes against Mama Dial. If I didn't catch the first one, I'd generally catch the second. This isn't a calculation, by the way, just a random number that felt right. Good luck, sir. Good luck, sir. Well, not yet. No. No, 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 no. No, Splash! Recover! I landed it! Let's go! <laughs> yeah! Was that Big. one? Yep, one tile before the tree. Holy. Yeah. Rip her apart! <laughs> See you later, alligator. Yeah. The police are here to claim the purple. We are here to take your mega rares. <laughs> Screw your pool! Give me more points! <laughs> And here is 415 superior Slayer creatures. I've been trying to track every five, but I sort of lost track. And then I remembered that, hey, I should probably track them again. And then I realized I was past it. Yeah, 415. And I decided I'm gonna start stacking up all the clues that I complete while doing this grind. I'm pretty much doing this in Chambers of Zarek right now anyways, so. That is a drop. So I've come to a bit of a mental discovery, I guess. With the upcoming Elemental Weaknesses rework, the Imbued Heart sort of loses its usefulness for me. Now don't get me wrong, if I use the Imbued Heart and the Sang together, they both will be better DPS than the Eldritch Staff and Fire Wave, or Mystic Smoke Staff and Fire Wave, but the Imbued Heart's boost only temporarily lasts my magic level would continue to drain over time. And this means it'd only be useful for maybe one or two of the totem phases. So what it comes down to is, at the base level, the Eldritch Staff with Fire Wave will be better than the Sang, but if I have the Imbued Heart and Sang together, they will be better while my magic is boosted. So do I really need the Heart at this point? I can't use it at Chambers, I won't use it at Tob. I guess at this point it's more of a niche unlock. A cool item to get. And we have to do Slayer for Sandfuse anyways, so here we are. And that is 420 Superior Slayer Creatures. We got the log this time around, 420. First rare of the day, not too bad. The rewards as follows. So, you might notice something slightly different about my inventory, and that is that I have a coin stack instead of a strength cape. Now, Zero asked me earlier, before we started raiding today, well, why don't you use Karamb ones? And I proceeded to ask myself the same question. At first, I thought it was a cinch, swap from cheesy potatoes to Karamb ones for an additional two hit points per slot here, and also because I don't bring the strength cape with me anymore, that's an additional piece of food. However, there's a catch. I would need to place coins in that inventory slot I just gained from sacrificing the strength cape. So, the new route is as follows. After every raid now, I will teleport to the Azar fight pit, and we will run to the east here, and my conveniently placed main account will pick up the raid loot. We then continue to run east and out the cave exit. Up the climbing rope here, we run west into Brimhaven. Through the gate, and here lies the pub where we buy the Karumbwans. So after buying all these Karumbwan, you can see we have our full inventory and we're ready for the next raid. Now we can unlock this additional inventory slot if we farm up some mud runes by killing spiritual mages, 
or undead druids in the Forthos dungeon, as that will allow us to combine these earth and water runes in our rune pouch into one rune slot, allowing us to bring our law runes instead. Then, after each raid, the minigame teleport would be used for last man standing so that I can take coins out of the LMS coffer instead of bringing them in the inventory, and the law runes would allow me to teleport to house and then travel west and take the boat to Brimhaven. But that also means I need to farm out mud runes, which I might test out a little bit. Sort of sounds interesting. Just use them for chambers. I mean, I will never complain when I get an additional inventory slot for an extra 18 hit points. Hello? I misclicked. Mm. Oh no, I caught it right at the tree! So no. cringe, no. I have one prayer point, so this is very scary. Well, there goes my prayer. Oh no. Huh. Ticky time it is. I think I'm gonna die, bro. I've got one ticky left. I splashed three times. Four times. I got it. Blast him. Come on. I'm out. Ow! Oh my god. <laughs> Ow! No. Tickies! Ah! My God! I need the Die. food. For... God! Die! Ah! I need this I'm food. Dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. It's dead! <laughs> oh my God! What well, the hell was that? That was rough, is what it was. Holy mm. moly! All right, so I am gearing up for some theater of blood. So I need these hard caskets out of the inventory. So we will reset the left click back to the open and we'll go through these pretty quick. Nothing. A duplicate rune helm H3. Nothing. A black cavalier. Very epic. And more nothing. Double vial of blood? What the? Why did nobody pop off? Where's the... What? <laughs> I'll get that right here. More vials of blood, okay. Oh, I didn't know killing a spiritual mage was an elite task in the Fremenic area. Like I may have stated earlier, I am very simply attempting to kill some spiritual mages for mud runes. Sort of feeling out the rates, testing them, per se. At the current moment, undead druids are sort of packed with bots, or gold farmers at the very least. I don't know what's going on there, but every world has at least one person in it, which is wild to say the least. So while I run up to undead druids here, you can see some bones on the ground already, and what's this we got here? It looks like a bot. And over here, another bot. So this sort of brings me back to the main question, is it even worth it to farm out mud runes and keep a stack of those in the looting bag? It is probably better to just keep a cash stack in my inventory while doing the Chambers of Zarek normal mode. Maybe this is something I could look into for CMs, but at the same time, I won't be entangling in CMs, so my rune pouch can remain the normal rune pouch that it normally is with law runes, earth runes, and soul runes. So I think I've decided to not do this. I heard about a new plugin, well, new to me at the very least, called the Skills Organizer plugin, and this allows you to fade, hide, or darken the visibility of these stats. So I'm simply opting to fade them out because I think that's what looks best, but let me know what you think down below. I just filtered through all of them there, so. I definitely think that fate looks the best though. But yeah, that's the plugin, Skills Organizer. Make sure to use it if you're restricting your stats because, well, no reason, it just looks cool. And entering the chambers of Zarek and leaving has broke it. Okay, very cool, very cool. Just turned it off and back on again. Sorry, I didn't mean to give you a tutorial on how to solve all of your tech issues. That is 425 superiors. So after consulting with a fellow 807 who has apparently tested this three times, apparently we can start the Twilight's Promise quest and get to a point during the quest where we can make use of the Quetzal transportation system. So I'm gonna go do that. I will note that the worst case scenario is that I gain eight thieving XP and that will put us nowhere close to a level. So apparently it's supposed to give zero, 
but if we do gain the eight from quote-unquote pickpocketing a civilian citizen, then that's fine. I've accepted my fate. Start the Twilight's Promise quest. And there it is. So looking at the actual guide, it says citizens are level one, but the wealthy citizens are level 50. So I think the wiki is actually slightly incorrect on this front. Pet Molossus. Who's a good doggy? I think this is the guy I need to pickpocket. Not yet, though. Not yet. All right. We do something we shouldn't. We disable the custom menu swaps, and we can now see the pickpocket option. Ooh. This is the gentleman. Oh, I don't want to do it, man. I don't want to do it. Apparently, this gives zero thieving XP, I hear. I really should test this myself. Ooh. Ah. Uh, it's only 8 thieving XP if I do happen to get XP, so I'm just gonna do it. Let me just confirm that this is the guy, because I don't want to have to pickpocket more than one if I have to. Yeah, that's the guy. Oh, God! Oh, oh, no thieving XP. <laughs> okay, that was crazy, unironically. <laughs> Now, I do have to note that we cannot complete this quest. Completing the quest will give us 4,000 thieving XP, I believe. So this is one of those quests that we now only have to start to get access to something in particular. Another knight returning? Oh, and uh, don't forget to turn your custom menu swaps back on. I'm ready, let's do this. I'll never see this coming. He is defeated. Oh, never mind. Man. He is defeated. Never stood a chance against the Inquisitor. And that is another knight. No breaks. Not allowed. Not gonna lie, I thought I needed a bucket of water for this part. But it's just the fountain that's needed. And there is the last two knights. Oh, for those of you who do not know, this blacksmith actually sells adamant scimitars. It's better than Zeke's shop in al -Karid. Imagine that. Disabling the custom menu swaps once again, we find a conveniently placed incriminating letter. Oh no. Custom menu swaps back on. Vellum, step forward. Oh, he's dead. Regulus Sento. This is the big moment. I was told to ask you about getting to the Teomat. My own Quetzal, Renu. Yay. Quetzal feed. There's Renu. Let's feed the Quetzal. I have something for you here. Eagerly takes the feed from you. I reckon she'll let you ride her now. And that's that. We now have access to at least some of the Quetzal locations. So that's pretty cool. At least we have some form of transportation around Varlamore. And that is where we stop in the quest. And of course, we can go up to the Tiamat, the Guidance of Ralos. But we don't want to do anything up here because we don't want to continue the quest anymore. So naturally, the next part in the quest would be to talk to the Prince. But we're stopping. The new prayer activity of Varlamore is unfortunately unavailable to combat-only accounts. The only way we can get bone shards right now is by actually chipping them up from other bones, and that gives token crafting XP. So should the group boss be available to us in the future and it drops bone shards, for example, then the method would be available to us. Ooh, master clue. Possible. Today is May the 9th, and we officially have, as of yesterday, the Magic Training Arena Quality of Life updates. So we head into the doorway here, and we see the brand new overlay. I had 1,000 enchantment points, but I turned them all into chaos runes from the shop here, because when you buy chaos runes, it only costs enchantment points. So our first goal is going to be bones to peaches, and then we are going to get the infinity hat. Good luck, have fun to us. Oh, and these are what the runes are currently at. May as well get a start and a finish point. Yep, that wasn't quite enough. Also, I'm dropping the orbs because I don't really care about the runes or the extra magic experience. I'm level 99 after all. I offered nine orbs. Yeah, I did a little testing. What about it? Looking at this shop now, I really don't think the cosmic runes from here are worth it when I can just 
buy them from the Mage Arena for cash. <laughs> That's that, 580 Cosmics, and I simply bought 50 Nature Runes every time I hopped Worlds. This amount of Cosmic Runes will get us the last amount of enchantment points that we need for both the Hat and Bones to Peaches. I used the good old collect option here and I collected 300k from my bank collection box and I'm left with 2.2k. That's awkward. I didn't calculate the number of earth runes I needed. <laughs> oops. Well, oopsie daisy. And the final enchant, we are over 5,000 and I completely forgot they reworked these corners. So I actually ended up doing the bonus shapes for the extra two points per enchant and i didn't need 580 i needed much less than that that is that 1250 so at the end of i think solving five puzzles here we are supposed to get a full run energy regen so let's see if that helps me maintain business here wow it moves much faster than before holy moly oh and there's no delay now Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. look at me run around Oh, that's nice. Oh, and I ran too far. Oh, this will be a lot more active now. Okay, so you can't telegrab it while it's moving. That makes sense. But you can telegrab it as soon as it stops, and now it runs, which is fantastic. And that's a full maze, fully commentated over. Look at us go. All right, do we get run regen now, or is it the next one? Oh yeah, I gotta talk to the new maze guy. Okay, so it's after you complete five. That sort of sucks, but it is what it is, I guess. And that was the first full regen. Let's see how long it lasts. All right, here we are. The fifth maze, full run energy, and we start anew. So far, I have discovered that my run energy will run out on the third maze, regardless of whatever maze I happen to get in the random rotation. But I do want to note that these MTA changes so far are fantastic. Big props to the team for coming back to this older content and giving it some new life and playability. And this will be part one of the telekinetic room completed. 200 points is all that is required for bones to peaches. We move on and we juggle our clues. That took less than an hour because my clues didn't despawn and I haven't left to juggle them yet. So I now no longer need to leave the room as long as I don't let the bones fall from the ceiling on my head and damage me. Which is pretty nice because I used to have to take trips to the duel arena to heal. And instead now I can just stay and attend to my business. And as you can see, the graveyard room is as simple as this. You just watch your little counter here tick up. Once it hits 16 or over 16, hit the bones to peaches and click the food shoot. I have exactly 16 inventory slots open, so I actually had to alk my strength cape to make an extra inventory slot because my bag is currently full, which is a little crazy to say the least. But at least this is the last time that I'll have to do a magic training arena, right? And here we are, 200 graveyard points. Done for now. We'll be back later. Oh, and I guess that took 35 minutes. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Hey, 107 virtual magic level. It's been a while since I've got a virtual magic level. 28.7 mil XP. The MTA plugin has yet to be updated, but it is nice that they reduce the number of these cupboards in this room by two. Makes it easier to locate the correct item. I say as I find the incorrect items, that's very funny. Oh, there's also that nice right click take five option from the cupboard now, meaning you just have to click the cupboard less. Oh, and fun fact, you can actually log out in these rooms now. I believe all of them except for the enchanting room. All right, so that is 204 points, which puts us up to 290 total out of the 300 that we need, but our clues need to be juggled. So I'm going to leave early to do that. And there we have it, the last amount of points that we need for Bones to Peaches. Some changes I left out before, after the items are reshuffled, these cupboard doors stay open, which is very nice and convenient now. And I think this timer lasts for a minute now, maybe? You can correct me down below. All right, here we are, part one, Bones to Peaches, confirm. You have unlocked the Bones to Peaches spell. And that is a new collection log slot as well. And we can now return to the graveyard room. One of two, and we have the infinity hat left to go. 350 telekinetic, 350 graveyard, and technically 398 alchemist. 
So I'm starting with the graveyard room, and after a little incident with coins in my inventory, we'll cast the bones to peaches deposit, and you notice that we got two points instead of one point. That is also another nice change that has taken place since, well, the magic training arena changes. But yes, that's why I have an abundance of these water runes in my inventory now. Oh, and I guess I should mention that the alchemist's room took just over an hour. So in total, Bones to Peaches probably took two to three hours, which really isn't bad at all in my books. And with this final deposit, 26 or so minutes later, we have our 350 graveyard points. That's wonderful. Thousand fruit portions, two left to go. I do have to say, if I didn't have Bones to Peaches, it would have taken me double the amount of time. So with Bones to Peaches counting for two points instead of one, that just means the room is sped up once you have Bones to Peaches, which is really nice to say the least. I gotta keep saying it. The MTA quality of life changes were great. Fantastic even. So I've now spent around 20 minutes doing this telekinetic maze guardian, and I can pretty much tell you that now, from experience, you can pretty much make your run last for the full five mazes to get the full run regen. You just have to micromanage it a little bit. And of course, this applies to combat-only accounts because, well, we have the classic one agility. For example, in this instance, it's going to take a while for the Guardian to walk to this side, or I guess run, so I can very simply walk and save run energy. This is a great maze, by the way, for preserving your run energy. And of course, on the shorter corners, you want to make sure that you get to your corner faster. Another scenario where we are pretty much essentially done with the room, but we have two minutes left on our clues. So, gosh. These last few rooms are taking us just over an hour each, which is sort of funny because I have to leave and juggle the clues each time, but, you know, this is the price I pay for stacking clues. And don't ask about my juggling arrangement here. These are wilderness clues. These are normal clues. Let me tell you though, this mage training arena minigame teleport, oh, so good. So good. And with this last cast, we'll get the bonus as well as the base amount of points. And this will give us 358. Oh, I thought we got the additional two points, but instead we just got the 10 points. That's fine. So, 358 telekinetic, we only need 350, all that's left is alchemy. The final alk has been completed, we chuck the coins in and we get 350 pizzazz points. So that took around an hour and a half, I'm going to say. The enchantment was probably like 10 minutes. Telekinetic was probably around an hour, hour and a half as well. These are easily the longest rooms. And the graveyard room was super quick. It was like 26 minutes, I think I said. So we can round it out to probably say maybe four hours for the infinity hat. And speaking of which, I was actually going to hold off on getting it until the project rebalance was put in, but there's really no point in waiting, right? Oh, well, back to the room I go. Yeah, so we took around four hours to do this in its entirety, and we have the Infinity Hat, the final item we will be receiving from the Magical Training Arena. A new item has been added to your collection log, and we toss it on. The cool and stylish hat. And I figured I may as well just pick it up now instead of waiting, like I was originally planning on doing. And instead, we'll just be dropping an amulet of avarice so that it will take that slot in the looting bag. We're done here. We love the changes. I'm gonna say it again. Props to Jagex. Look, let's air something out right now. I know I could drop this amulet of strength and it'd be all the same, but I'm a hoarder so I need to deal with that. So we will only keep one Amulet of Avarice. We can chuck this if we need another bag slot. Hell, I use the Amulet of Strength at Nightmare. Yeah, sure, I can easily get it back, but why drop it if I don't have to, right? And let's watch it go. Oh, I had a bad angle on Inquisitor, my bad. Oh well, it's gone. Holy, look at him. Holy moly. No, that's an absolute chad right there. Ho oh, ho! Last cow fight kill coming in here. That's 20 to 90 tasks for 90 points. But I wanted to highlight that we started with around 4.4k nature runes and we're down to 1.8k now. Meaning I used a lot more nature runes than I thought I was going to. But that is okay. I think I used around 1,000 law runes. I think the stack was at 12,000 beforehand. But that's completely fine. We can always buy more nature runes. And 11,000 law runes is more than enough. Holy. Another missed battle staff, huh? I see, I see. Well, we are no closer to the imbued heart compared to when we killed our first 
superior. We now have five of each. Dust and Mist Battle Staves. Sick. Superior KC 428. So I have some chambers plans with Mr. Zero, and what I'm going to be doing this time around is leaving the Dragon Pickaxe in my item retrieval service, because I'm fairly sure we haven't had Guardians a single time since we started running together. So I guess this is essentially what the new inventory is going to look like for now, and we need the Xerix Talisman. And that is that. Yeah, so we've added the Infinity Hat to the setup in preparation for the new Project Rebalance coming, because I feel like I'm going to need all of the magic damage percentage that I can handle. All right, for posterity's sake, just take a glance, all right? Pause the video if you want to see it, but this is the setup in its entirety and everything intact. Yeah, I need to uh, go and listen to the rest of that. I'll probably oh. do that on my way to work today. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay, off, 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 oh. all right. Three, <laughs> two, one. Go. <laughs> I did put a uh, redemption on, but I realized I've got zero for her, so you know. <laughs> I, I couldn't see. Even if you did put it on, it would have been under my protect from melee, right? Yeah. Oh my god. This is a smooth raid. Yes, for sure. Logout tech is something that Ultimate Iron Man can use to log back in earlier in the raid as the Chambers of Zarek sets up save points every time you go down one of the holes to descend to the next level. Therefore, if you want to make use of a prior save, you can't go down to the next level, as it will make a new save point to log you in at. I make use of this to go back and pick up supplies I may have left on the ground. After one such instance of using logout tech, this occurs. All right, you can go down. Uh, prepping, bro. <laughs> I, well, if you want, I'm just letting you know, like, you know. <laughs> gosh. I know All you're right, prepping, thanks, bro. Thanks. I've, I've raided with you for, like, <laughs> quite a few raids now, you know. I, was like, I didn't think you'd know about it, to be honest. That you prep? Yeah. Hmm? Huh? No cap. Well, I know you have to prep because someone has to tank all the hits. It sure sh** ain't me. <laughs> oh, <she might> it. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up? Hi. What, what are you running back for, man? Um, nothing. Oh, okay. Just going for a little jog? Yeah. Gotcha. I thought I'd run back to use the energy well, because the other one doesn't cut it. It doesn't taste good enough? Nah, exactly that. Ah. This one tastes like honey, you know? Yeah, and the other one tastes like... Uh... Piss. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking, but I wasn't about to say it. Great man's been like more. Yeah. Those energy wells actually contain liquefied minion. What? <laughs> Come again? There's a lot of things that are yellow, I guess. No. <laughs> Did you get dragged, bro? <laughs> yeah, because he was fleeing from you. <sighs> Maybe I shouldn't do Chambers of Zerk today. <laughs> oh, and you're already killing, not even waiting for me after you murdered me mercilessly. Bro. He's farming <laughs> points this raid, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, you didn't even lure that one, bro? Why did... It is, it's lured. It's following... Why was it following me, then? Well, I just, um... I ran to the east <gasps> tile. Oh and then just God. ran back, and I assumed he was on oh. <laughs> 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 Jesus. Uh, Got a damage yeah, on the mailer, so... Did I just get hit with three rocks? Yes, you did. What the hell is this rigged... Oh, this isn't safe. Oh, sh**. There's bug room. It comes over here a little bit. Go for the freeze anyway, bog. Caught. Hey, yeah, we just got it. Let's go. You love to see it. Yes, sir. Smooth raid, smooth raid. No cool. restarting. Yeah, do a little damage too to be holy damage. What the hell was that pathing? <laughs> what? What? <laughs>
I've never seen Mudda path like that before. <laughs> Holy moly. That didn't even look like we were DD'd. Yeah, it's because I was still uh, clicking uh, in tech everywhere. Good luck. Unless finish it. health. Finish it. Finish it. Man, Good luck, we ain't gonna get anything. Uh, 500. <laughs> well, that's that. All right. Congrats on five. Was it 500? Yup. Congrats, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! He's a beast. We got 500, yeah! <laughs> Next is another purple, surely soon TM. Holy, that was a clean eight way, holy sh- Nice. Oh my god. You can't make this up. I need the rubies. Ruby to spec right now. Hey, let's go! Wait, did you redemption? Yeah. Oh my god. Please don't punch me in the face. Time it, time it! Uh. Oh Ooh. no! Ooh. Oh my <laughs> god, he did it again! Let's go! That's crazy! So recently, there was an update made which fully refunds the zeal tokens or nightmare zone points when you unimbue certain items. So in my instance of unimbuing the berserker ring, I'll be refunded 130 tokens, and I get refunded 130 because I have the hard combat achievements completed, which halves the cost. So I am reimbursed 130 and it costs 130 to reimbue it. The TLDW, my berserker ring is now a baggable item. Yeah, get his ass. Oh my god, the pathing. Is my pathing. frog gonna path that way? Are we kidding me? <laughs> Bye, buddy. He's going for a walk. <laughs> it's gonna die by the time it gets there. 45 seconds. <laughs> oh, it gets one shot off. Okay. Hey, got two. Game three. <laughs> hey, oh. That's crazy. Collection log slots. What? Completed. What? Nothing. You had perfect timing on that. Holy. <laughs> I don't even have the plug-in. <laughs> Good luck, sir. Good luck. This is it. Congrats on your ancestral uh, world top. Congrats on dicks. Oh, purple! <laughs> congrats, bro. <laughs> wait, is he... Wait. I, I closed my chat, remember? So I don't know what it is. Oh, okay. Congrats, bro. Congrats. Uh... No, not another <laughs> one, bro. Money. Why? Yeah. I, I, I did say it. Oh, I didn't hear it. Sad. It? Sad. <sighs> Dex number six or something. That's so depressing. I have six prayer scrolls and one ancestral robe top. Uh, that's so bad. I'll put it one way, bro. You've had two purples. I've had zero. Well, to be fair, if that was your purple, you wouldn't have wanted it either, so. <laughs> I mean, I would have just said pet roll and get moved on. Yeah. Oh, well, it is what it is. Never back to back. Wednesday, May 29th, and as you can see, the yellow text, the combat rebalance changes have been made. That means that we should now, instead of having, I believe it was 10% magic damage before, we should now have 12%. Yes, look at that. So now each piece of infinity gives 1%. The mage's book gives a lofty 2%, which is pretty nice. And the nightmare drop rates have been buffed and various other little things, which is very nice. So I'll still be bringing my Sanguinesti staff to the nightmare, but I do believe that fire wave with the Eldritch nightmare staff is better now. Hi, editing Sam here. The statement prior was true in the beta of Project Rebalance. 
However, since these changes have been pushed live, the weakness of the Nightmare Totems was dropped from 100% fire weakness to 70% fire weakness. In attempts to save you all time, here's an excerpt from the future. Because with this new information, the Sanguinesti staff actually remains our best weapon to use at the Totems. Now, if the Totems were 100% weak to fire spells, the Mystic Smoke Staff and Eldritch Staffs with Fire Wave would have been the go-to. However, However, now they are not looking at the DPS here. So we will be continuing to use the Sanguinesti staff, being thankful for our extra max hit that we receive, and I figured out that I don't actually need to bring all of the infinity pieces, just two of them, and I'll have the same max hit, which is really nice. See, swapping back to the plate skirt here, still a 36 max hit, and if I swap to the hauberk, that's when it goes down. So I need six swaps now instead of seven, but I do have some plans to do Chambers of Zarek today, as I wasn't initially expecting the Nightmare update to drop today, I thought they were going to be updating blog by blog, but instead, blog 2 and 3 just released today. So, we can return to Nightmare whenever. The autocast delay when you're choosing a spell on a normal staff has also been removed, so it's gonna feel a lot better to use this now as well, and it's the same deal for the Eldritch staff. Anyways, big changes this week. Last thing I don't think I mentioned was Mystic Might now also increases the magic strength by 2%. So magic damage goes from 12% to 14% in this setup now, which is really cool. And with the Elder Maul getting the buff that it has, it's sort of like combining my Dragon Warhammer and my Ursine Chain Mace into one weapon, should I happen to get one. So even though it's only a very, very slight 0.3% or somewhere around there damage upgrade, I'll also gain an inventory slot which would be neat. And the set effect bonus of the Inquisitor's armor has also been updated. Very cool. It's good to see that this has changed. Ah, but if you're missing one piece, it doesn't display the set effect. I see. Oh, I forgot to mention, when using the Eldritch Staff with the autocast option, I believe I gain an additional two tiles of range compared to using my Sanguinesti Staff. So that is also another big consideration. Oh my god, world first, cursed amulet of magic on the 807, this is insane. This is the new splashing amulet. Oh look, Zero's back with a new setup since the launch of Project Rebalance. In short, he dropped the Dragon Warhammer for the Elder Maul as it is the new best-in-slot melee defense reduction weapon. So weird not having Dragon Warm, I'm not looking for it. Alright, don't let me down. Don't let me down. Surely not. Yeah, let's go. I had a zero, no. Watch back, bro. Woo. There we go. <laughs> well, we're hitting big, so... Yeah, so... Holy moly. Holy moly. <laughs> bye bye. Holy. <laughs> that was a huge string of like really big hits. Yeah. I don't think there was a zero in sight. Cause I'm begging you for mercy. Oh. Wait, I just saw my max hit, but I didn't actually see the hit number. No. <laughs> Damn it. I don't know. Maybe I should uh, save that one anyways. And uh, oh, that's a 44. Oh, it's a 44. It's 44. Holy shit. I think before it was a 43, so... Hey, changes made a difference. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, oh shit. Oh, what the... <gasps> no, you, you're fine, you're fine. Yeah, we're fine. Oh. <laughs> that was wild. What a combo. <laughs> Wait, my chest doesn't have a light over it. That's funny. Okay, attempt mall number two. <gasps> Zero, great. Ooh. Sell it. I'm selling it. Yep, sell it. Drop it. Alk it. Low Alkit for the disrespect. 150% fire weakness. Oh, I think that's buffed. Holy f- <laughs> 150% accuracy and damage. Oh, <laughs> this is gonna be wild. Super combat, why not? Miss. Got one of them. Hold the instant attack. The tick removal. Oh, that's a big hit. 154 XP. 54 oh max <laughs> hit! Whoa! <laughs> With this gear, that's wild! Wow! Oh my, 50! 50. <laughs> Holy! That's crazy! Oh, I'm... See you later. Oh my god! Didn't I say a freeze I could kill, bro? Yeah, you, uh, you weren't lying. You definitely weren't lying. Oh my god, that's See you later, crazy. Keith. That felt oh. incredible. <laughs> <laughs> The Elite Clue, is it possible? Northeast corner in Shiloh Village, it is not completable. We cannot get into Shiloh Village. 
And there goes another 20 million, approximately, Gelinor pieces into the Sanguinesti staff once again. All that raiding is draining the sang. And there goes another two hours and approximately 10 minutes of my life to world hopping for blood runes. Yay, fun. It is now the following day and last night I was made aware of something I missed. If we show the spells we lack the runes to cast, you will see that we have the Flames of Zamorak. And with our imbued Zamorak cape, we actually have this spell unlocked. This spell, when paired with the charge spell, increases the max hit of Flames of Zamorak by 10, making the maximum hit 30. Now this spell, when used on the Fasani's totems with the 70% fire weakness, well, with the normal Zamorak staff, that gives me a max hit of 55 multiplied by two, which is 110 damage on the totems. Now I've heard through the grapevine that this is actually getting patched in some way, shape or form, but the Flames of Zamorak is considered a fire spell and therefore it is another spell that I should keep my eye on, both now and post patch. I think this is actually glitch now, isn't it? Yeah, but it needs to be more west usually, so. You usually stand on like the bells, but you're kind of risking it when you do that. Oh, I caught him! Oh, what a gamer. Holy the clicks. A new clog? As is tradition with coming to the mage bank, we make use of the collect function on the bank to get our GP out of the grain exchange so we don't risk it running through the wilderness. We then jump through the sparkling pool and we trade the chamber guardian to buy our Zamorak staff once again. And we saved our mini game teleport. So I overlooked one thing. I forgot that you can't actually auto cast flames of Zamorak with the Zamorak staff. So I would have to manually cast it, which isn't that fun. I'm still gonna try kill this way. It'll just be a lot more annoying, but I can tell you, I wanna see 110 damage. So after buying up my potatoes, you can see that this is our inventory, effectively, for Fasani's Nightmare, if I decide to go this route. Not going to lie, it is a little bit painful to look at. And now it's time to run a timer to see how long it takes to get to Fasani. So this is the new run to Nightmare I would have to do if I were to swap to using Fire Wave, or in this instance, instance, I made use of the Flames of Zamorak spell. As you can see in the inventory, I have Bloods, Airs, and Fire Runes in the Rune Pouch instead of my normal Law Runes, Earth Runes, and Soul Runes. And of course, this is important to highlight because this amount of time it takes me to get to the boss is effectively added to the amount of time it takes me to kill the boss. In essence, it takes away my kills per hour, I guess. Sort of why I'd love to be able to make use of the Sleppy tablet, you know? A little teleport to the Slep graveyard, please? And I have done the calculations. All I have to do is swap to my Ursine chain mace, even in my full mage gear to one-shot the husks. And of course, the last thing I should mention, I generally want want to enter Fasani's Nightmare with around 50 run energy, which is why you see me conserving it on my way up here. And there we have it, 4 minutes and 3 seconds to get to Fasani's using this method. So I'd say that's probably about average. We're generally in the range of 3 to 5 minutes to get to Fasani's Nightmare. Let's give it a shot. Starting at 700 KC, the drop rate buffs are in effect now, so the mace is now at a drop rate of 1 in 1250, taking our prior kill count into account, and the prior drop rate into account, we were 700 out of 2000 KC towards the mace, if we exclude all of the other items, which is approximately 35% of the way to to the kill count goal, and 35% of the new drop rate, 1,250, is approximately 437 kills. We'll chop the half off there at the end. So in the new drop rate terms, we are effectively 437 kill count out of 1,250. Oh god, that was ass, bro. Oh no. Ooh. I don't like that one bit. 90? 84? 102? 102! Holy nuggies.
Yeah, I'm just gonna say it right now. That's not happening. <laughs> oh God, that was an experience to say the least. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, no, this is just, it's too much. It's far too much. I have to be able to auto cast Flames of Zamorak for me to even be able to consider this. I just lost too many ticks after I swapped this staff and was manually casting the flames. Though it was super cool to see 102 damage. This is just a no-go. My only options for auto casting Flames of Zamorak are the Staff of the Dead or the Thamoron's Scepter. Will I consider these? I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, that's that's gonna be a no-go for me. Good luck, sir. Good luck. It's your time to shine. Uh, oh, no. no. I hate this f***ing game, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's the third scroll between oh. us. Ah, uh, one day. All right, back to back, back to back. Let's run it back. Woo! That's my 11th first scroll in a row. Ah. Uh. Pain. Eight, nine. No, that's my tenth in a row. Damn. I've got one ticket. Remember, you can redemption on your way out too. Yeah. Yeah. Keep attacking me. Keep attacking me. Come on. No balls. You won't attack me. Ooh. Oh, no. oh the redemption! <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> I knew it couldn't kill me. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that sounded a little arrogant to me. Watch this uh, poison chest kill me real quick. Oh, no. <laughs> That'd be so <laughs> funny. But don't do that. I'm going to redemption, though. Hey. hey. <laughs> Let me show you this animation. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I told you they'd use the old one. It's so good. That's awesome. Oh my god. Is it completable? Sherlock step. Oh, I gotta check this. Ooh. Another chance at hitting the 2 in 24 chance to complete all Sherlock steps, and we get an incompletable step. We'll add that to the pile. Good luck. Oh, a purple. Oh, uh, please be usable, bro. I'm so tired of not... I'm tired of getting scrolls. I'm tired of getting shit I can't use. Uh, three, two, one, go. I'm sorry, bro. This game sucks. I hate this game <laughs> so much. This... Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised I didn't say anything. And I yeah. Was, even if it was something, I was gonna say nothing. <laughs> yeah. Ah oh, man. One day we'll get something other than scrolls, man. One day. Yeah. The back to back. Let's do it. Come on, let's go. Last yeah. Of the day. Yep. Yep. Well, on the plus side, that's my first underrate purple in Yay. ever. So. <laughs> we can keep I that. Complain? I, don't know. I guess. No. <laughs> you can complain, bro. You can. <laughs> yeah, I'm allowed, huh? I, I don't know. I'm happy that it was under rate. I'm just not happy it was an arcane. <laughs> I just wanted to commemorate this day of June 5th, 2024, as it was the day that another 807 combat only maxed. So with these edited down clips, I'd like to say a congratulations to Dio on maxing his combat only. We all went to pest control and descended upon the novice lander. The 807s coming together to take down the pests and gaining a cheeky six points from the combat achievements. Thank you for that. And as you do in 807 fashion, prayer being the last 99 is achieved with a big ol' walk over to the monastery from pest control. The walk of victory, if you will. And the cape retrieval and emote. Man, it is a good emote, isn't it? Good luck. Good luck, sir. No way. No. <laughs> oh my god. What the f***? An ancestral bottom? No, why not the top, bro? No. Oh, 
no, on a death as well, oh my sh- <laughs> Well, it's not a scroll, but it's still not usable. Salty right now. I could have no. been your top. I could have oh, been your top. No. It's been 500 raids for that bull That's your what, second row bottom? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's my first dupe beat. But to be fair, I've always said this, I wanted all three dupes so I could have twisted set and normal set, so I'll take it, I guess. Okay, so it's not, it's not, it's not the worst. Bad. It's not a but... scroll. <laughs> Good, luck, sir. Good luck, my friend. May your purple be bountiful. Yours truly. Oh, purple. Oh, oh my god, I got Domelet! No way! Oh my god! Let's go! Fuck Wait. me, bro. Let's oh go, my let's go, let's go. Oh my god! Yo! Yeah. <laughs> okay, is the purple usable? I don't- I, I closed my chat. I closed is my it, chat. Is it usable? Nah, nah, nah. It's just another scroll. That's it. It's just Good another luck. scroll. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yo! Let's go with the HCB! Let's go! It's hey. usable! Let's Woo! fucking go. Finally, bro. Finally. Yes! Get. Holy moly! It's the DHCB lit. What? Oh go. yes! A usable item. Let's go. That's <laughs> crazy. It's about goddamn time, bro. Yeah. Holy moly. Now, how do I get bolts? <laughs> 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 oh my god. That's crazy. It's a usable item. I told you I was feeling good about today. <laughs> yes, your first grade of the day too. Yeah, that's a good warm up. <laughs> yes, sir. Wow. I put a good old pause champ ready. Yeah. Oh my god. And there it is. One of the first original goals has been marked off of the list completed. This is not to say that we won't return to chambers in the future as it is, after all, my endgame content, but I can't tell you if that prior clip didn't tell you first how excited getting this item made me. After 541 Chambers of Zarek KC and 37 Challenge Mode Chambers of Zarek KC, over 10 million Chambers of Zarek points, I finally got my first usable purple in the chambers of Zarek. It's usable! Usable items exist! Yes, sir! Oh my god, that's crazy. Time to out DPS me. <laughs> <laughs> it took you about six seconds to notice you got the pet, too. <laughs> yeah, cause I saw the purple, I'm like, oh, purple! And then I was uh, running towards it, and then I saw the omelet following me. I'm like, oh my god, wait! Oh my god. <laughs> Holy! And that was a fast raid, too. Yeah, that was one of the quickest rates we've ever done. Yeah, 30 minutes. 30, 30 minutes on the dot. Wow. The it was insane. Like, we got to, what, P, end of P3 with 1 minute 20 on the overload, I think. Yeah, that's nuts. And here we are with the fabled Dragon Hunter crossbow. We need some bolts. So we're going to grab some spoils of war. I'm just gonna do one at a time because I don't want to do an insane opening right now. I just want some bolts, even if it's adamant. All right, those are not bolts. Give me some bolts. All right, hello main account. Enjoy these items. Grade eight. D of course, yeah, double bolts. Yep, yeah, mm-hmm. Yep, that's just how she goes. Actually, I think that was triple bolts. That's actually insane. Well, we got our bolts. And now that we've completed a side goal of Inquisitor, we are in a manner of speaking free from the Chambers of Zarek, but I'm still gonna go back and do it from time to time. Obviously, the DHCB is just the weapon to use at Chambers of Zarek. So this is pretty much what the new setup looks like outside of the adamant bolts in the inventory. I don't wanna keep Zero waiting, so I'm just going to keep the adamant bolts in the inventory for now, but typically these would be in my death coffer. But yeah, once we buy our food, say hello to the new chamber setup, including the DHCV now, and runite bolts and or adamant bolts, whatever we have left and or more of. I'm just using the Renate Bolts this raid because celebratory, right? So I will be going through bolts really fast without the range cape, but I'll be using so little of them, it's like... Doesn't really matter, right? Yeah, exactly. That's a big hit. 44? My max was a 28 before! 
There we go. 35. Okay, okay. That's a big one. 43. That's a huge one. 49? <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> Not used to damage like this. Good luck, sir. Good luck. No, no. Back to back. Please? Never. Uh, and I got dragon arrows! Okay, maybe this is the time that I grabbed the looting bag. So I used 34 runite bolts exactly that Ulm head, so that's not too bad. It almost makes me want to keep the adamant bolts in the inventory, but I won't do that. So if we get a roll of 300 bolts, well, it should cover us for approximately 9 chambers of Zarek. It's a little uh, rough math there. So I can maintain the number of inventory slots for food. I'm actually going to bag the Berserker Ring imbued. Yes, this loses me a max hit on the melee side of things, but I think I'd prefer to camp the Brimstone Ring anyways in preparation for doing CMs. Bagging that ring slot opens up the inventory slot to keep the looting bag in the inventory for now, and there we go. That just sort of works out. I don't like this, but I'll figure it out, I guess. I did want to mention that, yes, we are down one inventory slot anyways, but that's just because I have the looting bag this time around. After I death pile, lose the omelet, I will obviously be allowed to chuck the rest of this into the death storage, until I get more dragon arrows at least. But one food should not make the difference, I don't think. Maybe in a pinch it'll help, but hopefully I'll be skillful enough to not find myself in a position like that. I started with 289 and I have 254 now, so that is 35 bolts used. Quick math. So I'm gonna say we'll average 35 a raid. That's pretty good. Uh, I feel like it's not too bad. I have formulated a plan. I know how to get rid of the coin stack in my inventory. So at the end of every raid, I will now teleport to Last Man Standing with my minigame teleport instead of the Czar Fight Pit. For reference, I will deposit all my money. But in this case, imagine I have none. I will withdraw 6,000 of my finest LMS stored coins. And I'm not gonna lie, I forgot to drop the loot to my main. Teleport to the Xerix Honor. Run south to our favorite mine carter. Is that even a word? We take a trip to Port Piscarillius for 20 coins. That puts us at 50 at 980. We take the charter ship to Brimhaven, which cost 2,000 coins. Dropping the stuff to the main who conveniently appeared. I will now buy the Karam ones in every world. And there we have it. We have too many coins. So I guess we pull out 5,000 coins at LMS instead. And there we have it. Eight food, just like before. And in the future, when I do raids again without the pet and the looting bag in the inventory, I'll have an extra slot as well. All right, I did the actual math. For eight Karambwans, it costs 4,686, including the minecart ride to Port Piscarillius, the charter ship to Brimhaven, and actually buying the Karambwans themselves. Now, in the instance that I get rid of this looting bag and I have that extra ninth slot for a Karambwan, that is when I would pull out 6,000 coins and drop the rest. So I was onto something there. 51 the max! There it is! Whoa. Hey, hard clue, let's go! Two hard clues? Oh, how kind. That is incompletable. What about the second one? CKP, Cosmic Entity Plane. That is also incompletable. Well, it was a nice thought. <laughs> <laughs> Task 2300 for 450 points. Guthic stole. Well, what did Guthic steal? An elite clue from Abyssal Demons? <laughs> That's a drop. Ooh. I. No! I literally clicked my brew. What the f? That's what happened to me earlier. Huh? Yeah, that was a good ol' misclick. I saw the menu of the brew out of the corner of my eye, which made me think that I had hovered over it, and I just so happened to click a pixel above the brew. Unlucky chief, skill issue. L plus ratio, so on and so forth. That's oh, a drop. Ugh, pain. One of my favorite things to do, go into the wilderness, disable my custom menu swaps, destroy my looting bag, and pick up my stuff off of the ground. I now have my adamant bolts. I used up all of the runite bolts so far. Now we get a new looting bag. Just like that UIM over there. Go. No. Oh, oh, God. It splattered the tile I attack at. 
then it splattered the tile that I normally click to as well. Oh my. Good luck, sir. Good luck. Finish him. Finish him. It's a big hit. The combo. Never. Never. And that was that. Mr. Zero has some IRL things to attend to, so he will not be doing chambers for a while. And this was the final raid. This is where we say sayonara for now. But what adventure awaits our Inquisitor in the next video? Well, I guess you'll have to wait to find out. I'd like to give a big thank you to the channel members who, with their monthly membership, support the channel. You can now support the channel for as low as a loony a month. That's a Canadian dollar if you weren't aware. So be sure to hit that join button below the video to find out more. An additional thank you to everyone who watched to the end of this movie. If you're new, subscribe and leave a like down below, and hit any other relevant button that you think is applicable. And I'll see you in the next one.